What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be breaking down how you can get a perfect throwing motion. Let's get started. Now before we get into this video, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you would like to improve your reading defense's ability, you want to know how you can read coverages, the best plays, the best route concepts to work against each specific coverage, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to 500 plus videos on how quarterbacks can read defenses. We map out everything, we categorize the videos into different playlists so you know what coverages to look for and how to study them. So if you guys want to improve your football IQ, you want to get better reading defenses this offseason, check out that very first First link in the description below. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so today we're going to be breaking down the throwing motion, the throwing mechanical sequence into three specific parts. And these three specific parts are going to help you guys increase your throwing velocity, your throwing consistency, take pressure off your arm, and just make you a better overall player, okay? So if you guys have any questions on any of the stuff that we cover in this video, don't hesitate. We respond to every single comment. Leave that in the comment section below. It's always great to hear from you guys. So first thing we're going to be discussing is the quarterback's base. So there's a lot of information out there about a quarterback's base. I'm going to give you what I've seen the most consistency with with the quarterbacks that we train. So when you guys go to throw, I think everybody knows that throw power doesn't necessarily come from your arm. It's not, uh, oh, I'm going to throw it as hard as I can. How hard can I bring my arm through? Your throw power comes from three specific areas, your legs, your hips, and your core. But a lot of people or everybody, I would say, that's somewhat familiar with quarterback knows that you want to rotate with your hips. But it not, it's not necessarily just rotation from your hips. It's about the timing of the rotation of your hips. So when you guys are loaded to throw, like in your throwing sequence, you don't want to be that guy that has everything rotate at the same time because that's not how you generate torque and had something called hip and shoulder dissociation. And we're going to get to that later on in this video. So to be able to get your hips to rotate through effectively, right, you want those hips to shoot through. It's almost like you're hitting a baseball, right? When you're hitting a baseball, you keep the bat loaded. You take a step with your front foot and you want those hips to bring the bat through. That's why so many people talk about like bat speed, etc. And that's how you get that torque. It's the same way. Quarterbacks, baseball hitters, golfers, we're all rotational athletes and we generate power the same way. So essentially in a throwing motion, you want to be able to have the bat, the football back and loaded and have those hips rotate through bringing my arm through. That's what takes pressure off the arm. Now, all of that cannot be accomplished without a good base. So what do I mean by that? When you guys go to throw so many quarterback coaches, old school guys, used to teach you want to have like a really wide base. You want your feet to be outside your shoulder frame so when you guys go to throw, you'll take a short stride. I think we all can agree we don't want a long pitcher-like stride as a quarterback because when your feet are very wide, what can't you do? You can't rotate at your hips. But when you have a wide base, you can't rotate at your hips either. So what you want to do is you want to try to have a narrow base. Not narrow to where your feet and heels are almost touching. That's unrealistic. You're not going to be able to move like that. Back foot underneath the back shoulder, underneath your hip, and your shin is straight. You don't want your shin to be caved in. So many quarterbacks will cave, and that puts a lot of their weight forward, and they're not able to generate any drive. So we want to try to have my shin straight, about 70%, 60 to 70% here, and light on my front foot. You should be able to pick up your front foot. Now, why do you want to get there? Because that helps us get to my mechanical sequence, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But more importantly, when this foot is under your frame, and you take a short stride, you see how much you're able to rotate. And that rotation right there is the key source to power. But like we said, it's not just about rotating, it's about the timing of the rotation, and that's what we're gonna get into next. All right, guys, so now, like I talked about, you wanna have that back foot, 60, 70% of that weight on that back leg, loaded on the back leg, back foot is, sh your shin is straight, everything is loaded on that backside. Now, why is that important? Like we said, that'll allow your hips to be able to rotate when you're in that type of base, but also, that's gonna allow us to get to that mechanical sequence and that hip and shoulder dissociation spot that I was talking about. So, when quarterbacks stand in the pocket, and let's say, instead of having weight loaded on your back leg, you have weight loaded on your front leg. A lot of quarterbacks will get to that point when they throw off of a drop. It's very easy to have clean mechanics when we're just playing catch, but if you're dropping back, like let's say I gotta throw like a quick seam against maybe cover three, I'm trying to thread the needle. A lot of quarterbacks will drop back and let's say they're taking a three-step drop, no hitch. They'll go one, crossover two, hit the third step three, and they'll have all of this weight distributed on that crossover step so their base is off. They don't have their weight back, their back foot ends up being super wide, and so what ends up happening is, is everything's out ahead of themselves. They're throwing the ball all arm because their base is off. It doesn't allow them to get hip rotation, but it also doesn't allow them to stay back 
with their upper body. So where do you need to be? If I was taking a three-step drop, I would want to be one, two, three, weight loaded on my back leg. So when I take a step with my front foot, you don't want to push you want to try to step down and maintain some weight on your back leg because when you could stay there on the foot strike my shoulders can rotate all day long when i'm forward my shoulders can't rotate at all you guys could all try that you want your weight to be back foot is down and we're here so now why is this position important because this is how we generate power because in your throwing sequence you have to get to a good base you have to get the front foot down and then the hips have to rotate through before the shoulders and the ball do. My hips got to come through and the ball should be trailing behind my hips. I cannot get to that spot if I do not have my weight back. That's why the base is the most important thing. Quarterbacks are built from the ground up, not from the top down. So when you land and you hit that third step, you want to stride, your shoulders stay back. So now guess what's my only option? I have to transfer the weight. You want to stride first and stay back, then transfer so those hips come through before the shoulders do, and that's where power comes from, fellas. So you have to get to that mechanical spot. You have to get your weight back. You have to delay with those shoulders as that front foot is getting down. If you can maintain weight on your backside and a separation with that upper half when your front foot gets down, there's so much energy from the hips, and that's that timing of the hip rotation. It's not just about rotating at your hips. It's about the timing of the rotation with your hips. All right, guys, so I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm talking a lot about the throwing mechanics. I'm talking a lot about the base. Now I'm gonna show you how it should look and then talk about the front side, which is the third section of the throwing motion that we're gonna break this thing down into. So when you go to throw, Again, like we said, let's recap. Where do you want your back foot to be? Underneath your shoulder frame. You want about 70% light on the front foot so we can do what? So when you take that short front stride, we're not pushing to create the stride, having all my weight go forward. I am stepping separately from my back leg. Your weight's loaded, you step separate, the hands separate and the shoulders separate as we step. So now I'm loaded, that transfer can bring me through, but when I finish, you guys are gonna notice something about my front side and my head. So I'm gonna throw at this target here, so I come back. This is nice, easy, shooting through and rotating through. So now, when we do that, and when you rotate through, notice how when I let go of that ball, I'm not letting my front elbow pull down. I'm not letting my head dip out of the throw. I'm not taking my front shoulder and swinging all the way around and over rotating. I have a disciplined front side and that is how you guys can get more rotation on the ball, more velocity on the ball, and more consistency when you throw. So let me explain because now obviously we have a good throwing sequence. Your weight's back. You're taking that front stride. Those hips are shooting through but a lot of guys still are inconsistent because this front side is extremely wild. So every single quarterback has something called the midline. You have a line that goes down the middle of your body. So whatever the front side does is going to affect your throwing arm on that midline. So a lot of old school quarterback coaches used to teach pull through as a source of power with the elbow. And that will give you power, it probably will. But when you guys go to throw and you pull through and you pull this elbow down, what does that do to your release usually? pulls you up high and that's why you look at so many old school quarterback coaches guys and so many old school quarterbacks used to play way back when they all have this crazy high release and I'm not saying to not have a high release not a crazy high release where you're coming down on the ball because that will cause it to sail high and miss low so what you want to do is you want to keep this front hand steady you want to keep this hand by your collarbone you look at any I'm telling you this right now any top 20 quarterback in the NFL look at their front hand when they release the ball they're all gonna be either here here, or some guys will be like hand on the shoulder. Some people teach bring the shoulder to the front hand because that will keep this discipline and keep this up. Now, a lot of other old school quarterback coaches used to teach, take this front shoulder, you stride and rotate and rotate and replace. But here's the problem with that rotate and replace. You can still keep your hand up too all day long, but when this front arm pulls, what do you think it does on the midline? arm widens and you're coming across. That's that bad sidearm that everybody loves to talk about nowadays. Not the good sidearm where you're changing up the arm slot and you stay disciplined, you're swinging. Now all of those things, the pull down, the swing open, the dip of the head, that prevents us from getting to something called extension. Extension is when you release the ball and you snap. That's how you get spin, but your coaches all the time, hey, flick your wrist, snap, like, like cut the target, whatever it might be. That's a fancy word, or not, maybe not a fancy word, but that's another word for extension, right? We can only extend if I'm disciplined with the front side. If I'm generating all this torque from my lower half, rotation from my core, power from my legs, but this is wild, 
I don't have that finishing snap and that finishing torque to the throw. But if I'm able to generate all this power and stay here, head steady, hand by my face, shoulders level, my arm is just along for the ride and I could extend, snap, get more rotations on the ball and be more consistent with the ball. So fellas, it all comes down to this, base, hip and shoulder dissociation, so your sequence like we talked about, and that front side being stable. If you can master those three things, you will be a more efficient passer. Every single quarterback in America throws the ball differently. I don't care how old you are. You'd be 10 years old, you could be 35 years old. You all have different body types, different mechanics, different ways you throw the ball. But if those three areas you can master and be efficient, because there's not one way to throw a ball. There are many ways to throw a ball. There are many arm slots. But if you can get those three things down mechanically, you will be a more efficient passer. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, like we said in the beginning of this video, don't hesitate. Leave those in the comment section below. We'd be happy to help. Guys, we literally answer every single comment on this page. It's not, it's not obviously hateful, but we answer every single comment on this page. So if you guys have any questions on anything, we're always there to help. And again, if you guys would like 500 plus videos on how you can read defenses, fellas, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. It'll really help your football IQ this summer. I'll see you guys next time.